All right, hopefully all of you all saw <coughs> the announcement and what we're doing today. Mm -mm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so this week we're talking about teamwork. So today we have a project and we are all one team, one big team, and we work at a hospital and our hospital has not gotten the best patient satisfaction scores. Uh, the patients are not happy. They're not happy because they're waiting too long to be seen. And we're specifically talking today about the emergency department wait. Uh, the emergency department wait on average is three hours, yeah. which is a very long time. Not even can see it. So what we have to do is we have to form a group, which is gonna be us, and we have to figure out how we're going to address this issue. So what we're going to do today is to talk about teamwork and how we're going to form this group, um, what are our responsibilities going to be as one leader and as, as team members, how we're going to address any conflicts, and um, what we need from leadership to make this an effective team. So hopefully you guys are paying attention in class on Tuesday and, that you, and hopefully you've read um, this chapter because basically what we're gonna do is just talk this out. So I need uh, input from you guys, of course, as to what steps we're gonna take to address this issue. So, can somebody tell me what would be the first step? This is our group. Mm -hmm. And we need to tackle this problem in the ED. What's going to be our first step? Evaluate our staff. Mm -hmm. Find out why we're taking the home right for the patient. So first step is going to be evaluate our staff. Find out where the problem was and make it so hard. Does everybody else agree with that? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Make sure ah. we have quality staff in down there. Everybody else agree with that? Evaluate our staff? No. Oh, no. I think we should find out why is it taking so long. You say we need to find out what's yeah. taking so long. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Everybody agree with that? <laughs> I'm going to keep asking questions until I hear the right answer. <laughs> See, you know you know. This is our team. We have just been put together to address this issue. So what's going to be our first task at hand? Find out what is it define the problem? Okay, it's a problem. Long, like, figure out how long the wait time has been over three hours and why did it start then, I guess. You would go back to square one, kind of sort of. Or has the IER wait I mean, these, are all, these, are all, these are all relevant steps, but what's going to be our first step? What are the goals? Come together and meet. Oh, the goals. We're going to come together and meet and what? Discuss. 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 Formulate a plan. When you when you meet together with your teams, what's the first thing you decide? Who's the leader? Who's the leader? There we are. Oh, we need a leader, right? <laughs> <laughs> right? Don't we need a leader? Yeah. yeah. Shouldn't that be the first thing? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. All right. <laughs> Who said that? I did. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we're going to define our leader. Without a leader, there's no what? Team. There's no order. Oh, right? All right, now, now we can get to some of this other stuff you guys are talking about. <laughs> What's going to be next? Somebody said. The find the problem. Okay. Well, we already know the problem. Yeah, we are. Okay, well, goals. There we go. Goals. Gonna define our goals. Mm -hmm. How they will be measured. What's next? Like, see if it's a short term or a long term goal. Like, so, how do we timing? Deadlines. 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 Okay. 
what's next. This is a big team, so I should have lots of ideas. Mm -hmm. Evaluation of jobs. jobs. Tasks? Yeah. yeah. I'll take that. So what's automatically going to come after us defining tasks? I'm sorry? Shared, you know. What's going to do what? Delegation. Yeah. All right, we got a nice little list going on. <coughs> What's next? Decide when and where you got for updates. So I get that one update two days from now. Then. So meeting schedule. Okay. Okay, I could have had you guys acting. So. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so you know, work with me here. Do you assign the task? Do you assign We got the task right here. Yeah. So the meetings, we had meetings. Who you report to? Yeah, we just, I guess. All right, who we report to? Okay. So. All right, well, I also said that, and this is all from your chapter, so those of you who have your books, please open them, and that will help you. Um, we have to talk about um, responsibilities of the leader and the team members. So let's go, let's go through that next. This is chapter 13, correct? Right? Uh, yes. yes. <laughs> Let's start with a leader. Thank you. Team needs to have knowledge and skills. 
They need to and be members, diverse sorry. as well. They need to be flexible. That's what it is. They need to be knowledgeable. Are they knowledgeable? No. Yeah. Yeah. Functional. Get their get their yeah, assignments. For which one? Members. Members. Yeah, members. They can be knowledgeable. They're responsible for their job. They're responsible for it. Members need to. Reliable, reliable. Reliable? Reliable, yes. Yeah. Yeah. Participation. Yeah. And ideas. Participation. And ideas. <laughs> All right, now we're looking better. Anything <laughs> else? Respectful. Yeah. Well, respect. Okay. Yeah, no, 
Yeah. I'm still looking for several things we discussed, but I'll take that. Maybe some sort of like mediator. All right, that's one of them. Mediate. There were several more. Problem solving. Problem solving. That was another one. Thank you. Research. Problem solve. Learning. Doing more research. More research. Yeah. Thank you. And third party Common ground. Voting. Voting. Thank you. That was another one. Bargaining. 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 Thank you. That was another one. You guys are good at reading your book. Yeah. <laughs> Anything else? Is that all of them? I think that was all yeah, of them. Yeah, all right. So we've listed all of them, but we're not going to do all those. All right. So out of those, which ones are we, our team, going to use for our issue? Let's pick at least three. Voting. Voting. Communication. Voting. Let's, let's mm -hmm. go one by one. I heard voting. Yes. Why is that a good idea? So everybody can a chance to weigh be part of it. So we, we say that gives everybody a fair chance. Mm -hmm. Vote. All right, everybody okay with voting? Yes. yes. All right, so that's going to be one. All right, what's next? Research. Research. Why research? Mm -hmm. Take too much time. Communication. Mm -hmm. That's the key to solving the problem is the research behind it. Well, we're talking about conflict, not the problem right now. So what we're trying to figure out is we're preparing ourselves so that when we do have conflict, we have this list, list to go to to see, all right, how are we going to solve this conflict? Communication. Communication, isn't it? Well, communication wasn't really on the list, so we're not going to use that one. Okay, well, it's mediation. It's, it's the bottom ones. Um, bargaining. So we have bargaining. 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 Yes. Why? That, that way everybody be able to put in their input and then we can all come to a common ground. But we're doing that. No, but you bargain. I mean, you're going to have to bargain with each other in order for everybody to get what they want. So we're going to do voting and bargaining. But we ought to do to have voting. I mean, I'm just asking questions. I say you have to communicate with them. Well, we can't well, communicate with them. Okay, one of the words that she's talking about. Can we use it? If there's an issue, you guys, people, you, 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 you got to immediately talk about what the problem is. Okay. Okay. According, to the, according to the book, these were the, the ones yeah. that are used in conflict. Yeah. I'm not saying yeah. these are wrong, but we're going to focus on these right now. Well, you got to mediate between the two individuals or more that's having a problem with each other. Uh -huh. So we want to mediate. Problem solve. Problem solve. We want to problem solve. Yeah. Problem yeah. solve. Yeah. Problem. Well, how can you solve a problem? But you, you can't don't know, solve the problem with that you respect. You got to respect each other. You have to ask them that's what the problem is. Then you that's not the first thing. That's not the first thing. That's not the what? We're looking at the the bottom ones. Oh, yeah. Prop solve? Problem Or mediate? Me I said media. We can do three. Oh, we're doing three. So those are three? Those are three. Yeah. All right. Yeah. 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 So we got that established. <laughs> <laughs> I get it. Right? Yeah. We're good. Everybody's good. Okay, so what we have here is we have the steps that we need to gather our group, to define the task, to handle the issue. We have our responsibilities down here that everybody has to do, right? Mm -hmm. And we have our plan when things go wrong. When we have conflict, we've decided that we are going to mediate, yeah. problem solve, right. and vote, right? Mm -hmm. Everybody's clear on that. Mm -hmm. So now, what we need to do is actually tackle the problem, right? Mm -hmm. Which is what? Okay, just want to make sure y'all paying attention. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So here we go. So we got the ED. Wait. How are we going to solve this? What are we going to do? Figure out how long, like, I guess, start from the beginning. Like, is it so 
So we want to see how long it's been happening. Yeah, so we can figure out. So we want to see how long the issue determined the length of the problem. Okay. I'll go with that. All right, what else? Determine if we have enough staff to cover it. Determine if we have enough staff to fix the, the issue. problem. Determine if we have enough staff. Evaluate the schedules. Not is that what I heard? Yeah, not just like staffing, but patients. Evaluate the patient schedule or yeah. the well, both probably. It's the patient schedule. Yeah, so there's not going to be any schedule. So when you say reevaluate the schedules, you mean the schedules in the past? Yeah, like, I mean, assume, you know, look back and see if Friday and Saturday nights you need extra nurses. Okay. To figure out what's going on. I'll take that. Evaluate intake. Yeah, like, you know, okay. your numbers are for every day. Your patient, problem could be patient in triage, patient area. Reevaluate patient intake. I heard something about triage. Yeah, your issue could be in your triage area. Like, are they performing, you know, at the capacity they need to be performing in order to, you know, direct patients to where they need to go? So we want to examine the triage. Would you want to examine uh, a certain like shift that if it's longer, like you know, it could be a, a, a team that's slower than others. Or, so, like, no, 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 so like if you know the doctor is habitually slow to get to the You want to evaluate shifts. Yes. Evaluate shifts. All right, we're doing good. Are we stumped? <laughs> There's one uh one area that's not here that definitely should be looked at. What about the clinics, like the ready, the urgent care clinics? Is that something that they could maybe try to work with? So instead of going to the ER for runny noses, then they maybe have another alternative that they could direct those patients. So what would we what would we be doing as a team in that in that would we be calling them? Are we? Like, set, once they go through the triage, set up like a fast track. Like, if it is something simple as like a runny nose or something like that, then they go, I guess, they go to, to the, the other side. Them. Yeah, How redirect like them to another department versus sitting beside someone that's actually like maybe having like heart problems or something. They do kind of do that over at Womack. They, yeah. like, yeah. run of the yeah. mill type yeah. illnesses, they do direct them to a different section and there's like a whole team that takes care of them. And then the actual emergency, you know, they yeah, have like a whole area for that. Yeah. Area for that. They In separate so them. you're saying that as a solution? Yeah, I guess. Yeah. Okay. Right, over here we're looking at different areas mm -hmm. and as I said there's one area that's not up here that we definitely need to look at okay that's one it's not what I was thinking of but that's we need to evaluate the physicians that's why I was talking about like the shifts like if there's a like a, a certain nurse or doctor that's slow how about how fast you're discharging patients once the issue's say. been resolved because you know sometimes you're sitting there you, yes. you know what's wrong but you're sitting there for another hour just waiting to get your paperwork to leave so we're evaluating discharge yeah. procedures yeah yeah that's that's There's still something Ooh, else that's not up here. You need to evaluate it. Well, I would say intake is one, but that should go with discharge. Evaluate your intake and, and discharge. Mm -hmm. How long is it taking for you to get people in and get them to the back? Yes, ma'am. That's it right there. What is it? We're evaluating intake. Slash. 
reception area. Right. Yes. Exactly. All right. What else? There's another one up here that you guys may not know, but. Well, let me ask you, is that evaluate intake and the reception area, is that saying to evaluate the people that come in there to see if it's an emergency? Is that no, what that means? No, like the oh. people that sit behind the glass that take your information in order yeah. for you to yeah. get to the back, the ones that get you to the front, and get your gear. medical information, yeah. history and stuff, and then get you ready, ready to go right. to triage. Because if they're not efficient, they're going to throw everything right. else off. Uh -huh. yeah. mm -hmm. If it's okay. taking them two hours to get to a patient every uh -huh. two hours they're getting to one patient is that's going to draw out everybody's wait time what else might cause a backlog in the ed and like i said this might not be something that you all know but it's very important what about resources? Uh, i'm sorry resources resources yes yeah. i'll take that that's not the one i'm thinking of but uh and that's sure. a good one yeah. evaluate resources you mean supplies yeah I like okay. Like if you have a blood pressure cuff that doesn't work, you know, you might have to go and do it manually. Equipment malfunction. Yeah, malfunction equipment. All right. What else? There's actually two that I'm thinking of right now. I'll give you one. Space. For example, the problem may be that the ED just doesn't have enough rooms. What if they only have five emergency rooms? That might be causing a backlog. Maybe they need to consider expanding their ED and adding more rooms. So evaluate space. Adequate housekeeping. <laughs> There's another one that's very key. It's not up here that I'm thinking of. Wait, housekeeping be what? Because they gotta get the rooms cleaned out. If I get the rooms cleaned out, they need to get people back there. Housekeeping. Out of like ancillary staff you have, I, I get, of course that kind of goes back to staff. Ancillary definitely has to be evaluated. Well, if you're going to evaluate the physician, aren't you going to have to do something with the nurses? I mean, yeah, they're covered right here. Yeah. Okay. Uh, what else? Who going to? Cost. We're not going to worry about cost right now. Okay. What might be a reason that people are waiting in the emergency room? It's obviously because they can't get back behind that waiting room, right? Yeah, they don't have doctors. Okay. Well, they don't have doctors. Well, we got that here. Right? Right? There, there has to be a reason that these people are stuck out in the waiting room and they really? can't get back to be seen, right? Uh, and that's probably why. The communication is off too. They're not talking with each other. Okay, that. But we're gonna hold that. There's a reason they're in the waiting room and can't get back, right? And that's probably because there's people back there, right? Mm -hmm. yeah. So they can't get back there. Right. Mm -hmm. So what might be causing that? Lack of family doctors. No. But what's something that has to be definitely has to be looked at? Everybody stop. Then I'm discharging them. I guess on time. If they need to expand, the you're close. Make more rooms. Because I think if because you can't get people more more in if you can't get them out. You're close. So what do we have to look at? See, how many guys are available? Space. Yeah, space. And space. 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 Right. And they're not being efficient and they're not getting people out of their beds up there. We will never be able to move our people up to the That's floors true. that they need to be on, right? Right. Yeah. right. So we have to look at this. This is not our area, but we still have to look at it because that's going to affect how we move our patients. That's right. You can't send them up there until you get those. Right. 
We can't send the people back in the emergency room up, which means we can't get the people out of the waiting room back to the scene. I don't know. I, I just think usually, though, in, in an emergency department, I, you're probably only sending 10% of the people, though, upstairs. Uh, uh, really depends really on the really hospital. Yeah. yeah. Depends on the hospital. Because most of them come in with the runny noses, the fevers, the... What about the yeah, but you might have a site, a site patient, the, and the, if you have to wait for that, um, the, the gunshots, the, the this, the right. that. Yeah. Yeah. It, it really just depends on what hospital you yeah. have. Um, internal bleeding. You said you have a, a psychiatric yeah. patient. You yeah, have I get depends, you know, whether you're working at trauma type ER or and right. a normal country, country yeah. county, oh, house, yeah. county yeah. hospital. All right, so we've established all the things we need to look at. Mm -hmm. It's a great list, very exhaustive list. Mm -hmm. Now we can move over here to our solutions. We have one, obviously. No, it's not going to fix everything. So we need more solutions. Peak hours, more staff. More staff? Peak, Peak hours, hours, more staff. More staff. <coughs> Peak hours. They work. Peak hours is cold, two o'clock in the morning. morning. More staff. More staff. Better flow of patients. To other departments, your ancillary, your how are we gonna make that happen? Mm -hmm. I help you on this one. Can you request um, that? When I worked at a hospital, and we, this this happens at every hospital. This is an issue everywhere. It may not be the ED, but somebody's waiting somewhere. Um, and one thing that we did to help the flow was we um, hired more volunteers to serve as patient transport. So, and once we hired those, those extra volunteers, we then have more people to push the wheelchairs, to push the gurneys, to get people where they needed to go. So that was a big issue, is that people would be done, but they would just be sitting there because they had no one to transport. All right, what else? Request that at least maybe one or two beds be just be open just for ER patients to come up. Like, so. On the floors? Yeah, on each floor. I mean, good luck. Is that more Yes, more more transports. Let me ask you a question. I have a question then, and then I'm going to come back to you. <laughs> Why can't I don't see advertisement up there? Now, my question with that is, okay, I'm, I got K for battle in my mind. They have built urgent cares. They got another hospital over there on Ramsey Street. All these they have done for people to go to to eliminate some of that emergency room staff. But unless you advertise, people won't know it's there. All right, I'm cool with that. All right. Aggressive ads. Right, because people don't know. Also, you got to tell them that about a lot of people go to the emergency room because of insurance purposes. A lot, I'm not going to say urgent care, but that one particular hospital over there on Ramsey Street, you can go in there and you can pay later. Emergency departments typically bill you later versus you go to urgent care, you're going to have to pay that. Right, you know, so right. That's why. But see, at the one on Ramsey Street, you had to pay a double uh, a double copay because you had to pay the five dollars to the physician, and then you had to pay uh, pay one of your copays for your insurance. Oh, but if you don't have no insurance, insurance. We're about people that are not but insured. if you don't have no insurance, they're still going to send you a bill for that doctor. Yeah, they can send you a yeah. bill, but you can pay it. I mean, well, <laughs> you can do it. Well, I think because I took myself because he had his health choice, I think area. I have to have a copay. Thank you. What do you say? How? 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 I'll Adding more training. More training. All right. You guys get what I'm saying? I mean, instead of just throwing out a solution, I want it, we got to figure out how we're going to do Training it. reception. So there we are. Training. Got okay. training for a reception. Sorry for those of you trying to take notes. Okay, back to the beds. Oh, okay. Yeah. Back to the beds. Okay, most hospitals are striving to make money, right? Mm -hmm. So if we're holding beds, mm -hmm. we may not 
We may not be uh, maximizing our potential to make money. So I'd be a little afraid to go to my CEO and ask, can we hold XYZ beds on this floor? Mm -hmm. yeah, but, yeah, but, if, but you might still end up losing patients if they have to separate. I've seen people sell weight two or three hours and say, forget it, I'm walking out. I mean, that's still, that's still CEO's okay. okay. Yeah, CEO's okay with that, though, yeah. because yeah. more than likely, yeah. they don't have insurance. Exactly. Uh -huh. They're going to come back. Uh -huh. They're coming back because they're not going to like early care, so they're going to go back. It might work, but you don't need a strong case. That's what I'm saying. You don't need a strong campaign. Sorry, I didn't mean to come back. All right. I mean, I see what she's saying. It's a great idea, but they're probably not going to go for it. You can hire more like PAs versus physicians because the cost is cheaper. I like the idea. I like that idea. Um, how about the the the, uh, the, mat, the nurse or the physician that is running slow? They could, you can put them, up, you know, and see if they can do a schedule change. Whether it's not with the, um, the peak is, I say, the peak is like between like five and eight p.m. You can put them in like a one before shift or something. It's usually not there for days though. You mean the move the physician to a different time? If possible, I mean, because I mean, you don't want them in the emergency room if they, you know, if you know that like on Friday, Friday, Saturday nights when they're most most, most amount of traffic comes in, you don't want your slowest doctor on on board. Yeah, but see, you may not. You guys, look, you're you're looking at the emergency department. department. Yeah. Your peak hours might be. It really depends on the hospital. Yeah, where it's located, yeah. how many people you got coming in. Your peak day might be Wednesday. Yeah. Yeah, you know I'm saying it might not be Friday, Saturday night. It might be in the middle of the week. And well, most physicians that work in the ED are there on call. Right. Yeah. So, so it's not the fact of them being slow, it's just that they're, they're on call, so you still have to call and wait for them to come in. But at the same time, even if he is slow, you're still going to want more than one physician. You'll have, several, you'll have several ED physicians that work on a shift, mm -hmm. and then the rest of the physicians that come in are coming in because they're on call. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You need to go ahead and expand your facilities. If the cost was an issue, add rooms. So looking to add in rooms. Yes. Additional space. Additional. Do routine uh, maintenance checks on the um, on the on the equipment. Equipment. All right. I'll take that one. You need to open up communication so you can open up that hospital operations too for other floors. Everybody needs to know what's going on. How about on. an up to date ER? Yeah. Up to date. Up to date ER um, report. Uh, your electronic records update. Make sure you have a system that's fast enough for people to record information on. Okay. Put it like EHR system update. Most hospitals are good about doing that. They have to be in very close communication with the ED to make sure that this stuff is happening. Mm -hmm. Had the ones that fall through the cracks, so you got people waiting to go upstairs for x rays. You know, nobody come get them, so they're sitting there for an yeah. hour and a half. So, we're gonna do about that. Mm -hmm. We discussed it over here, but how are we gonna fix it? Volunteer, all right? Said that already. Yeah, we said that. Good. We said, yeah. but, but, the, but, but the ancillary specifically, yeah. Yeah. how can we how can we improve that yeah. process? So I know it's like Kate here that you know the people who are checking in are also answering the phone. So can they just have like you know most of the volunteers come in and just do nothing but answer the phone while they're in there you know getting our information? Answering the phone from you know like other departments, from other departments, or somebody's calling in, calling in the emergency room. You know because half the time you're there and they're putting that tape around your wrist and they're talking on the phone at the same time. You know that's no. I think that's one of it's like I, I that's what I noticed that why they're a little bit slower. They're talking with the, uh, Here, they're talking to a patient on the phone. So I said, well, maybe they're what volunteers? Yeah. Volunteers. Hmm. Can they split it up in some way? Because you know, obviously, when you go in and you talk to the girl at the desk, they rate you based on how severe you are versus when you get back. Is there a way to maybe break that up? Like you know, patients who are in pain six mm -hmm. through ten go through this way. Mm -hmm. Patients are here for cough and cold. Get That's kind of kind of what this is right here. They yeah, just to break them all up. Yeah. And some hospitals do do that, and it does make them more efficient. 
Now, Cape Fear does it, right? I'm not sure. I think so. Going back to ancillary, I guess you would need to make sure that there's enough ancillary staff during Thank those you. peak hours ah. to accommodate the needs for x-rays, CAT scans, MRIs. Now I'm thinking like healthcare managers. Anything else? Everybody's quiet. Mm -hmm. It's a hard problem, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. We're done. <laughs> All right. Who's going to do what? We have this team. You got to oh, sign. You got to sign. You got to break it. You got to sign. You need to have something to delegate. Oh, oh, so the leader has to delegate. Yeah. 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 That's what we hired you delegate. for. Okay. <laughs> I'll, I'll, I'll try to I'm quizzing you guys. I'm just quizzing you guys. I'll try to You're in charge. You're supposed to lead us to make sure we. So y'all not a volunteer? What's some of us with volunteers, but you don't know how to You may not want that person to do So the leader has to assign these. Mm hmm. Everybody agrees. As long as, as making sure that you have something to do as well besides <laughs> <laughs> I know how leaders do. Yeah, y'all do that and I'll come back and holler it. No. But see, right. the leaders should know the strong their strengths of their team. Too. They should know where their strengths and weaknesses are. So we got to find so who's strong and well. well. Okay. Yeah. All right. Um, and the other, other only thing that I want to ask you guys about is, okay, we have this long, we have this great list um, of who, you know, the things we're going to look into, we're going to research. We have our solutions. Mm -hmm. How are we going to evaluate this once we're done? Surveys. Mm -hmm. Surveys. Mm -hmm. our, our, our patients. Our patients. 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 How are we going to make sure they answer them? They do so the surveys. For me, when I was in, when I went to Cape Fear, they sent me a letter yes. to, mm -hmm. to, to survey. So it's a mail them out. <laughs> but what if you mail them out? Mail them, you can, mail them or you can go in the room and do surveys on discharge. How you yeah. yeah. stay? How how was the patient uh -huh. care? How was yeah? I'm not surveys. But you didn't have to make it part of their discharge paperwork. Don't mail it out. Yeah, not right. Yeah, yeah. That's what I'm saying. Do it on discharge. Like as you're asking them how their pain is, you're asking them how they. Like, mm -hmm. was well, well, everything okay? Are we good with the surveys? Maybe we should wait till they get well. <laughs> wait till they get well. <laughs> and now well, I mean, you need to go back and <laughs> let <it> back. <laughs> do the research and go back and look at the average wait times. You know, don't just take the patients. Oh you know, yeah. For it. We need to go back and evaluate the average wait times. There we go. Do we just uh, choose After, something like a three month or six month period? Or, or, the, or a shift? Do we do it person or a shift? Or, you, know, you, can do you can do it per shift or you can do it as a whole total. So we're going to look at our own work, see how we did. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. Okay? Sounds good. Any any other ways to evaluate? How happy is your staff with what the new changes are? Staff, evaluate wow. the staff. So we have a staff survey. How they feel? Do they feel more overworked, less work? You know. Housekeeping, because they want to have to make them pay. The patients. Anything else? Um, is it like you know, talk about X-rays? Can you just like count the no, um, the amount of X-rays that were taken? I think that would that go with the weight? Yeah. Like, okay. Hmm. Can we look and see if our overall hospital operations is improved? Look at overall hospital operations. Anything else? All right, what we've done here is what an actual team would have done. Mm -hmm. um, as I said earlier, this is a common problem that happens in almost every mm -hmm. hospital in some department, whether it be ancillary or ED, but wait time is always an issue, even in physician offices. Mm -hmm. So what we've done here is we've gone step by step to assess the issue, figure out how we're going to tackle the issue, and then how we're going to evaluate it. And that's what happens in the team. You know, it's a step-by-step -step process. We didn't have any conflicts, but we had a few conflicts, we but we were able to, to talk through it and work it out. 
And so I, I'm pretty pleased with our teamwork. Are you guys? Mm -hmm. And we did okay? Can we be in a group again? Or we don't, did we not do well enough to want to work together again? No. We can do it again. We did, we did all right, all right? We can work together as long as it ain't nothing wrong with the ER no more. <laughs> <laughs> all right, you guys have a good weekend. <laughs>